Well, hello guys. Hope you're all well. Um, and a good Christmas and holidays or wherever you are. Um, I know I've not been on here for a while. Um, and lots of other things. So, uh, restoring old motorbikes. I've got a CB, 1969 CB 450. I've, I've actually uh, restored. I should do a little video on that. Um, and I've actually given up my flying, my RC flying helicopters. Uh, so I've got rid of all those. I've got quite an empty garage apart from the two bikes. So it doesn't give me a lot of room to do my videos, which uh, why I haven't actually been doing much. Um, on the RC side of it, um, I've kind of been doing a bit now and again, but um, I've gone into sort of running these big petrol boats, which I should do a video on, the uh, Tiger King engines and that kind of thing. Um, but I thought I'd do an update on my toy. Uh, I've actually going really, really well now. Um, I'm so pleased with it. Um, and I put a tiny little video on YouTube, on my channel, yesterday. Only, a, I think it's about three and a half minutes of this car running over a very desolate car park. But I've actually run probably about 10 tanks for it. Uh, it only does like three and a half minutes on a tank, but I've run one after the other, just tuning and tuning, uh, and I've made some really good headway. Um, as you can see, uh, I've changed from the Swamp Dog body, uh, and I bought myself a Mojave. Now, I did have an electric Mojave. I think I used to run it on 6 NAS, which was a wonderful thing. But it wore tyres out so quickly. And you know, and they're like almost a hundred pounds for a set of tyres. So um, I sort of sold that, give that up. Um, but when I did have it, I just did try the body to see if it would fit on there, and it looked kind of like it would go on with a bit of modification. So anyway, as the weeks have passed gone by, and I've been messing about with bikes and things, um, I gradually thought to myself, let's have a look at the uh, Mojave again, dig it out. So. I've been kind of looking around it over the last month or so uh, and I thought to myself, well, I probably could get a body to fit on it. Now, what I've had to do on, on this truck, I mean, you can remember, I used to have quite a, a slim kind of body on it, but I don't know if you can see, let's move this out of the way. I've had to cut the whole bonnet out because the engine is kind of just sticking up too much to kind of leave it on. but. You know, it helps to run it cool anyway, but that that wasn't the problem. I mean, I, I've even managed to get the driver figures in there. I don't know if, if you can see them. Um, yeah, so anyway, let's put the body away. Now, if you can remember, these are Mad Force uh, axles, which I actually shortened them down to fit the, uh, the width of the Swamp Dog body. Now, when I've got the Mojave body, <laughs> as you might guess, it's a lot wider than the, uh, the Swamp Dog. So what I did, I actually bought some new axles and put it back to the original uh, Mad Force wheelbase, the track. So I managed to track down all them parts and I just had to lengthen it, probably... 30 mil. As you can see in here, I've got a carbon fibre brace that goes through there. And I've had to move it from this hole to that hole. Sort of just, I think that was 30 mil to move it back. So I also had to cut and shut the prop shaft, make that a bit longer. Uh, the front is all as it was, but as you can see, I've got some little carbon plates in there. Uh, it's, it's kind of like my test bed still, you know, I would like to have a solid chassis and one day I will get around to making the, the whole lot. But as I was saying, I've actually found out how to make this engine run. If you watch my little video, it's on my channel, uh, I, I don't think you'll believe how good it goes. I mean, it's always been missing on one couple of cylinders and I've had it boiling over, I've had crankshafts break, I've had bearings fall to bits. You, if you watch my other videos, you've seen it, but I've, I kind of stuck with it. Um, and one of the biggest improvements I've found on this truck is to use these big four. Since I've been doing RC boats, 
I've realised you can buy these really, really big. I think they're 8mm. Uh, they're actually water cooling pipes that I use on my boat. You see the size of those? So you've got really good. I mean, I was using like a little fuel line, little fuel pipe on there, you know? And when you think about it, when you think of a real car, you know, a real car has like kind of really big hose in it. It don't have like little fuel lines. So I thought, so, well, let's have a go at that, doing that. So I went through the whole thing. Uh, I've had to move the radiator slightly forward. It's gone forward about 10 mil. Uh, because I kept having trouble with it catching on a fan, so that's another little mod I've had to do, move it forward. But anyway, putting these thicker tubes on, um, and bleeding the system, that's one big thing that I never do. You know, I could see the water rushing round, but it had like, air, you know, like airlock in it, because the bottom of the radio was getting hot, but the top was cold. No matter what I did, it was staying cold. So I spent, I've got a syringe, uh, and what I do is I draw the, the water few. I mean, it's still got a, uh, a little well, airlock in there, but once it's running and going round, but what you have to do is kind of fill this rad up first. So what I do is I stand it on its end like that, and I fill the water system up until I know I've got that radiator full up, put all the pipes back, and then if there is an air bubble in it somewhere, I just try and drip, fill it through with a hypodermic, or suck it through or whatever. But as long as that radiator has got a lot of water in it. And then when I run it, the whole red is like, it's warm. We don't get that hot, it's warm. And I've got a temperature gauge. I'll plug it in. I think it'll work. Yeah, I've got a temperature gauge on this side. Uh, it's really 19 out here at the moment. But that has never gone over uh, 70 since I've since I've done the radiator, bled it, put new pipes on, it keeps this engine really cool. And I think that is one of the main features that helps you tune this engine. The other thing I'm going to talk about is the carbs. Now, I, you know, had this almost running good and then not running good and all that kind of thing. Well, they are very minute adjustments on here. Now, I kind of set them all to the same, so it's like two turns out or whatever I set it at, to get it running the best. But there's always one cylinder that's kind of a bit fluffy, whatever, when it's on the, the top, you know, top speed. So what I've done is I put them all to the same setting, and I just altered one carb, you know, it's a tiny little bit, and it either makes it worse or it makes it better. And I went along to each carb doing that, till I've got this engine singing, on all four cylinders. Um, the other thing, I've actually pressurised the system now because I'm using this little tank and I've pressurised it from, this is a Mosquito helicopter uh, exhaust, and I've pressurised the tank because I noticed as the tank went down, it started to run sick. You couldn't get a consistent run through a whole tank. So I put this on as well and I had to what, lean it out almost sort of three quarters of a turn. And as I did, I could hear the engine coming on song, coming on song, up and down the road, my street, it got better and better and better, until I could, it was starting to wheel spin when it pulled away. So I thought, right, things are going well. So do you remember, as what I've done to this engine, uh, I've actually got the big bearing in the front uh, and the rear bearing that felt pieces, I've actually, Bored out, it's like a little, um, well, like a little cassette that pushes in, but it's so easy to sit up in the load. Bored that out so you can have a big bearing front and rear. Because Toyon have brought out another engine like this, but it's got a centre bearing on it, uh, which this one should have had in the first place. But saying that, I, I'm really revving this. You know, if you watch my little video that like I did yesterday, uh, this engine now is pulling top revs in first and second gear. And the more I run it, the more it's sort of coming on because I don't think all the time I've had it, I've ever had it running properly. Uh, you know, and it, I think the rings and the bore are so hard, it's taken a long while to bed in because you get so much, you know, blow by past the, the breather 
I mean, the amount of oil that comes out of the burrito, I've, I've kind of made up a, a small catch tank. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little catch tank in there. You can see it in there. I can't really see my camera because I haven't got any room out in there, but there's, there's a little catch tank. But go back to tuning this. Like I said, I've got two head gaskets, big bearing in the back, and a big bearing in the front. That's the mechanical side of it. There's nothing else done to it. But I've pressurised the system, which means you can lean this out and you get a consistent run uh, right through the tank. You know, it, this runs the whole tank now perfectly. Uh, so I'm also, I found out, I'm running a bigger bore fuel pipe because uh, it's a very small bore. So I'm running, because, you know, you remember you're feeding four cylinders and if I'm just wondering whether it's not getting enough fuel because I made my own fuel rail which you probably can see there so my own fuel rail I've made that as big as possible these are a bit small but I realised I only had a very thin bore pipe on there so I thought I wonder if that's not you know like because it would sort of peter out in top gear and just not misfire and stuff like that as though it wasn't getting enough fuel so I've made that pipe bigger and I went out yesterday with it and I put the body on and it went round and it was still not really singing, you know, it was sort of not bad. So I brought it in, lucky enough, with the body on I can still get to these little needles. Well, I've just done each little needle, probably not even a sixteenth of a turn. Uh, and when the thing pulled away, it kind of like spun all four wheels. I've never had power like that before. So I ran it around for like three and a half minutes for a tank and it was getting better and better because the gear change was changing earlier. If you watch the video, you can hear it sort of going burp, burp in the second, quite slow. But towards the end of the video, it's changing really quick where the revs are, are a lot more than it was when I first started. It's a, this engine as well, you have to kind of warm it up a little bit. So when you first start it, if you try and whack it away you know, off the line, it will keep stopping. If you just purr it around for, you know, 30 seconds or so, gradually build up the heat in the engine, and then you can let it rip. Uh, it, you know, and it looks so good with a body on, because I've never actually been able to run it with a body on. Anyway, I run, I probably run five tanks through it, and every one, it got better and better. Um, you could hear the tyres sort of squealing a little bit. You have to be very careful with this, because it kind of wants to roll over. Um, it's quite a heavy thing and it's quite high up. I did have an anti-roll bar on the back, but when I widen the axles and put the, the other axles on, um, I couldn't get it to fit, but I've got to work on that because it definitely needs an anti-roll bar on it. Uh, it keeps wanting to lift a, a wheel. Um, so, this engine, I mean, I've had a few comments about it that people have never seen one run like that, you know, without braking or running that fast. Because it's quite, you know, it's quite high geared really, um, and I don't know what it's doing top speed, but it's it's not hanging about, and the temperature is staying around about 70, 75. It's pretty reliable. I put a new start motor in it, uh, another brushless one. It seems to go through them, uh, sort of. Not so bad now because it actually starts really easy. But when I've had it before and you keep trying to start the thing, uh, I've had quite a few of those little brushless motors. Um, the other part of the body mounting as well, which I've not really finished yet, is it was, it was, it was quite a simple. I managed to use the original body holes. So I just made this little bracket that goes on the back. Um, I think this is an old, my beep was an old battery charger casing. You know, I never throw nothing away. And the charger broke up, but it had some nice alley in it. But I want to sort of sculpture that away and make that look you know, a little bit nicer. But... It was quite a simple job just to bolt that on, make two new posts, uh, and it went straight on. The front was a little bit more difficult. Uh, I had to keep kind of, I couldn't get anything to come up on the original mounts, but the mounts were like there, the original one. So I had to cut all this away. So I knew, you know, I had to make a different sort of mounting, which is. I kind of I don't like making these front mountings, but there was nothing else I could do. So to lower this down, I had to change this uh, throttle rod along here. I had to put it on the other side 
had to turn this round. I've had to lower this tank down, you know, by about 20 mil. Had to lower the fuel tank down 20 mil. And the rest of it, uh, I've actually, even the gauge I've, I've uh, lowered down. So I had to do all that to get the body to fit on. Because I didn't want it, it looked, had a gap like that. If you had it on top of there, it was, it was massive, you know. Which now, it's kind of fits on almost like the original one. Um, I've tried all different types of air filters on there, um, and it doesn't seem to like them. Oh, I don't know. I had some little foam ones on there, but it, honestly, it just seems to want to run like that. Any time, any type of sort of covering of that seems to mess the engine up. So, uh, as it is at the moment, uh, I'm just leaving it. Uh, I'm hoping to go out again tomorrow. We've got rain here at the moment. And, um, yeah, I'm... Uh, I'm over the moon with it. I've never had it go so well. Uh, and that, that is, guys, really the big water pipes. If you can keep this engine at a good temperature and run a bigger fuel pipe because, you know, you're running like four cylinders and it guzzles fuel. I mean, it's quite expensive, you know, to run. Like you say, it does a tank of 25%, which I believe is now about £35 over here. Um, it does drink a lot of fuel. But it really puts a smile on my face now. Uh, I had to buy some new reels for it as well. But, you know, I just like the look of it now. Uh, it's running ultra reliable. I've got, um, I can see I've still got a couple of little air bubbles in the uh, water line which I'll, I'll fill up. It, it seems to be wet. I don't know if it's got a leak or something. I, it's coming from somewhere and I just can't find out where it's coming from. But um, it's not fuel, it's actually, this, that, this is kind of like 50% antifreeze, it's like half and half and water. Um, but it seems to wonder, I wonder if it's one of the hose fittings, because I've had to kind of, these are such big holes, and these are quite small, they're only like three mil uh, nipples that come out of there. So I put like another bit of hose on it and then push the whole lot over it and run these spring clips on it. But I can't actually see... There's a little bit of water on the bottom. I don't know if it might be one of these connections on the bottom, but that's not not too sad. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up now. Uh, I've actually bought myself one of those new Lossy Promo uh, motorbikes, the off-road motorbikes, and I took that out the other day, and that is absolutely wonderful. You know I like my bikes. I've, I've got lots of old, you know, old road bikes, like the ARX and all that. And um, I'll do a little chat on the... Uh, on the lossy bike and how i come to you know get it it was um it was a strange thing but i sold my uh yz my old kosho yz 250 which i rebuilt and i actually got running uh, 1977 or 78 i believe um, i've actually sold that to a guy in china who runs the upgrade parts um of course uh biton or Bibiton or something like that. I can't quite sort of pronounce the name, but this guy does all the upgrades for fifth scale cars, you know, apes, and now he's doing proper spoke wheels and stuff like that for the uh, Lossy Promo bike. So I've ordered, I actually sold him my bike. Uh, I got a good price for it, and he just wants to stand it in his office, you know, he don't actually want to use it. But, um, I, you know, I've been in contact with him, uh, and he's sending me over some new... Um, or alloy wheels, he spokes them all himself, uh, and he does some good off-road and on-road tyres. So I bought two sets of wheels and two sets of tyres. So when they come through, I'll do a little video on them because the quality looks superb, you know, what other people have, have done. So anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap this one up now, and uh, Happy New Year and all that kind of stuff, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.